Okay, welcome everyone. We're here, Sister Anna and Sister Susan. Hi. We're going to continue our interviews with sisters who have known and lived with Sister Claire. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to pray a Hail Mary so we can entrust this interview to Our Lady and ask her to be here present with us. We have the Sacred Heart behind us, so um, we're in good company. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I trust in you. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, our Queen and our Mother. Bless our home. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Great. So um, we're back, and we just wanted to remind everyone why we're doing these interviews. Um, because this is not like a gossip session about Sister Claire, you know. <laughs> um, but it's really because um, it's meant to help us live out our call to holiness. Each one of us is called to holiness. Obviously, not all of us are going to be nuns <laughs> or priests, but all of us are called to holiness. So we're hoping that through Sister Claire's example and what Sister Susan is now going to tell us about Sister Claire, that we can learn how to live our own vocation to holiness in whatever state of life we are in. Um, great. I just wanted to keep in mind that um, during the interview, if anyone wants to write anything in the chat, uh, comments, questions for Sister Susan, uh, any questions you have related to Sister Claire, you can write them in the chat and we'll try to respond uh, to everything during the interview. Um, as you know, some of the sisters who we've interviewed already, Sister Kristen has been interviewing them. Um, some of the sisters knew Sister Claire from the moment she entered from 2001. Uh, while other sisters uh, met Sister Claire when she was already a sister. So we're talking um, years later, right? When she had already taken vows and everything. So today we're here with Sister Susan, who's gonna tell us how she met Sister Claire, when, where, and we're gonna see some of the photos of um, that, that time period when she first met Sister Claire. So it's gonna be really interesting and we're gonna see what she can tell us about uh, the figure of Sister Claire in her life. So, Sister Susan, uh, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but, well, um, I I guess I could start, like, when I met Sister Claire, right? Like, how I, how I met mm -hmm. Sister Claire. So, I am from Jacksonville, Florida, which is a city where the Servant Sisters of the Home of the Mother, we have a community of Servant Sisters. And actually, Sister Claire was one of the first sisters who founded the community if i'm not wrong it's, yeah it's like what i remember yeah. um and so in october 2006 i think it was when we founded in yes. Jacksonville. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um so i was 16 years old and in a very providential way i ended up um being like in the parish a weekend i don't know if it was the same weekend the sisters came but it was definitely like within like the first few weeks that they came to Jacksonville. And so I just, I remember what we had, like the sisters, it was, I, there was like a huge buzz in Jacksonville, uh, like among Catholics in Jacksonville, like, oh, the sisters are coming. Like, oh and did God. you think she was Spanish? Because I know a lot of times yeah. when we open houses and everyone says, oh, the Spanish nuns are coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and then you exactly, find exactly. sisters from all over the world. So yeah, did you yeah. think she was Spanish? There, there were a lot, of, uh, well, a lot of Spanish sisters, I don't know. Maybe there was like three of them were Spanish. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> our technical sister is just telling us a message. That's how we're looking. <laughs> um, and, and so a few of them were Spanish, but Sister Claire and another sister were Irish. Um, and so, well, basically, you know, just that's, I met Sister Claire in that moment. Like she was there, you know, or whatever. And the same weekend we had an, a retreat for young people. And that's why I was there in the parish. It, it's like a long story, but to cut the long story short, I was in the parish for a, a, a young, a youth retreat. And, you know, like the sisters came to the, to the, to give us a talk. And so that's like the first memory I have of Sister Claire. I remember seeing her, but then like the first memory that I have of her, like, um, like really like seeing who she was, I guess, in a sense, was when she came to give us a talk to give us a talk in um in the retreat that retreat was like right after they opened the yeah i that's house. what I, yeah. I it would be good to probably to look at like the, <laughs> the date sometime yeah <laughs> so that when it's possible yeah but it had to be 
I don't know, like maximum a month later. Yeah. But I remember it was still like the sisters that were just very new and stuff. Yeah. And they, yeah, they came to give a talk to. And do you remember what she talked about or anything that stood out from that? No, I I definitely do. Like I, it it is how how many uh, years have passed? Two thousand six, fifteen years. Yeah. 15 years later? Yeah, 15 years later. It's interesting yeah. to see what you remember <laughs> yeah. from, from I, that time. Yeah, I yeah. wish I were to remember more of what Sister Claire said. I remember, first of all, that she started talking. And, um, you know, Sister Claire, everybody always talks about how she had this huge gift to, like, be able to put on different accents. And I remember she spoke to us in her dairy accent. And we did not understand a word she was saying. Like, we didn't understand a word she was saying. And she was like, if I if I tell you the whole talk with this accent, none of you will understand me. So she started talking with an American accent. And we were all just like, whoa, like she's like, she's definitely like an actress, you know, and she told us a little bit about her vocation too in that moment. Like that she wanted to be famous, that she had done like acting and stuff. And then well, that God called her to be a nun. But what really stood out to me in that talk was um the radicality like just the radicalness of the gospel of the word of god and yeah the she talked about lukewarmness i don't know if like you i want me to, wow. <laughs> yeah. to tell about that. um she talked about lukewarmness and so i have never heard the gospel like just i don't know i never like yeah i've never heard it explained like that hmm. and she she was like you know that God says. Well, hang on a second. Could yeah. you just give a definition, like brief definition of lukewarmness, maybe for someone who's okay. who's tuned in and saying, like, <laughs> what is lukewarmness? Is that when you're not cold, you're not hot? Exactly, and, it is. But in a spiritual sense, in a spiritual yeah, sense, you, exactly. Yeah. Not when your body is uh, yeah. like natural. It's like so. In the she she quoted in the book of Apocalypse, uh, Apocalypse it's in Revelation, um, in chapter three, I think it is. If I'm not wrong, she it says the Lord says, um, since you are not hot or cold. I will spew you, spew you out of my mouth. I will vomit you out of my mouth. And he's like, oh, that you were to be hot or cold. Um, but you're like, you're poor, you're naked. Like you don't realize that because it's, it's uh, lukewarmness. It's, it's like a being without being kind of like yeah. spiritual. Just spiritual like an, an amoeba or something. Yeah. <laughs> spiritual amoeba. Yeah. Spiritual amoeba. Yeah. It's, it's, you're not on either side, you know, like you're not like decided you like, you're complacent with being good enough yeah. but not giving everything right yeah that's amazing to see how she like immediately spoke to young people about yeah. that and as soon as they they had just gotten there amazing. to jacksonville and thinking well maybe i'm going to offend someone maybe yeah you know not they're gonna all. be turned off not not all. All. that's that's like what after you know like my i guess like my path with the lord um and being now a sister too i'm like wow like sister claire did not have any human respect at all like thanks be to god that she she spoke the truth like she wasn't thinking about what we were going to think about her right. about, like what the parish was going to think about her yeah. she was thinking like what what is god going to think about me if yeah. i were to die after giving this talk to the young people yeah could would he have Give to spit me to, out of his yeah. mouth like yeah. i think that's probably that's at least what I like looking back on it now. I'm like, wow, like she really lived that. Yeah. And so she spoke to us about lukewarmness and the, she gave examples. And like the two examples that I remember, cause that really hit me hard because it was like, Oh, that's me. You know, like that's, I'm, <laughs> I'm that person. Um, she said one, eh, like you can't think that like you can do whatever you want and like be living in mortal sin. And, you know, she gave us examples, like typical examples for young people, like partying, getting drunk, doing drugs, um, living in impurity, not going to mass too, or, you know, so many things. And she's like, you can't live that lifestyle. And then think that, okay, I'll just go to mass on Sunday and everything's fine. Like Mm -hmm. there's not, it's not a big deal. Like, no, no, God's good. Like he'll take care of that. Yeah. She was like, no, no, that's, and she gave, like, can you give us like, that's lukewarmness. Like, that's lukewarmness. Like, you're, you're not. And then she gave us this great example for all of you. If there's American viewers here, they will understand me very well. Our sister Anna will definitely yeah, understand. We're, we're seeing Lester from Tennessee. <laughs> Hi, Lester and Marvin. <laughs> Thanks for your comments. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. Yes. The, if you're an American, you'll understand this example. Um, she said, you can't have your, 
Eminem CD next to your wow head CD and like think that like oh that's completely fine <clears throat> yeah what did she mean by that obviously you can't be like listening to worldly music and many times worldly music is very dirty as well like it's not yeah. it's not okay it's like not just like oh it's not that bad no like it's even worse than that and then uh, next to it wow head CD like um wow heads is like the christian like a yeah. christian music wow head cd you know like and think like oh i'm so good like i'm just such a good christian like yeah and so that that was like what really and because that, that was like me you know i was just like wow yeah like, yeah i, I think wow. at that moment i thought like who does she think she is like telling us that like <laughs> I, I, I was gonna like didn't really accept it that well but obviously if i remember 15 years later and i remembered you know like i definitely kept that there um it's because it was true, like it's true. Yeah, that's such a big lesson yeah. for, especially for all of you who maybe have children or grandchildren or work with young people. Like sometimes we have to be willing to receive, you know, like the the sad faces are just like being turned off, you know, like the, the youth are turned off at first, but then like the seed is planted and it, it blossoms when we least expect it. So maybe like your first reaction was like, who does she think she is? Yeah. And then, but then later on, like all those words have given fruit in your soul. So yeah. that's a, that's a really big lesson because sometimes we're um, so afraid of offending anyone that we never say anything um, that is worth saying yeah. <laughs> to the young people. Yeah. Um, well, listen, now that sister's talking about um, when she met sister Claire, we wanted to see some of the photos that we have here. We don't have a lot, but, <laughs> Um, you can obviously go on the website. Maybe there's a few more. And also, um, Sister Susan has written uh, her memories of Sister Claire, and they're published on sisterclaire.com. So you can read more of her memories there. But um, I'm going to ask Sister, the sister who's helping us now, if she can put up the photos, and that way we can... Yeah, we're going to see some of the photos and that way Sister Susan can explain what's happening in each photo, and you can get an idea of what Sister Susan was like and Sister Claire was like um, when all this occurred, <laughs> when they first met and everything, you can start making an idea. Yeah. So, okay. Are you seeing the first photo? Yeah, we're seeing the first photo. You guys are seeing the picture. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's actually funny, guys, because Sister uh, Anna and um, Sister Maria, our technical sister here, they showed me this picture like just like a minute before we started. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's when I entered the home of the mother of the youth. Like, I haven't seen this picture, I think, in my life. Um, so yeah, this is in the, sis the sister's house in Jacksonville. This is me. Well, yeah, I can't, I feel like the screen doesn't matter. I'm, yeah, this is me there. The sister's pointing with the, with the mouse. Um, oh, okay, they don't see the mouse. She just told me. <laughs> I'm the girl that's looking, holding a glass in her hand. Like, the only girl that you can actually really see in the picture, right? And then, yeah. like, looking at sister... Claire and Sister Therese, who Sister Therese is holding up the shirt. And it was because they gave me the shirt as a gift since I entered in the home with Mother of the Youth. Um, and I remember, what I can just remember, like, kind of in terms of Sister Claire on this day, obviously for me, it was, like, a big step. Um, and really, it was important. But I remember Sister Claire was so happy. Like, and not, not just Sister Claire, the sisters themselves. But I can say Sister Claire, too, definitely, like, um, transmitted to me the joy like this because i thought oh the sisters would probably be happy if i were to enter as a servant sister like it doesn't matter to enter as the home of the mother of youth like it's not going to be that big of a deal yeah but they were like so happy They're like wow like this is great like another young person you know they, they wow. were so happy yeah wow yeah and it like well you can see on the table the sisters like they gave me like chocolate then we took out chocolate we took out juice and stuff and just like that small um the small like i guess like hmm Details is not the word. I'm I'm really bad at Spanglish speaker here. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of like English is a like second yeah. language here. Yeah. But, but <laughs> guys, yeah. <laughs> um, just like those, yeah, those details. Like this, I don't know. And the sisters, they, they were like so excited, even though it was like you know, like some cho like leftover chocolates and like some juice. They were like so excited to give me like what what they had, you know, like out of their poverty too. And I was, it was great. It was great. Yeah. So that's in the house in uh -huh. Jacksonville. That's yeah. the house in Jacksonville. <clears throat> do we have more pictures there? Where the sisters still yeah. live. If any of you yes, live they do. near Jacksonville, they you could go and in visit Assumption our Parish. sisters. Yes. <laughs> it's where I was baptized in Assumption Parish. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So Sister Susan lived there and Sister Claire lived there. So yeah. it's worth visiting. <laughs> <laughs> Not because of me, because of Sister Claire. <laughs> okay, let's see. More pictures. Oh, yeah, this is a really good one. Well, like, I have not seen these pictures, guys. And I think in my life, like, I'm not kidding. This is, this these are bring surprises back good, for her, bring too. back good memories. Yeah, they bring back good memories. Yeah, so now <laughs> sister will explain which one of the girls she is. Okay, we're having some technical difficulties, but we'll get it on there in just okay. a second. Just one moment. Okay. Okay. Okay, now you can see it, right? Okay, so this is a picture. Um... I'm there in the back. I'm sitting next to Sister Zinka. Sister Zinka is there in the back. On the Sister top of the Claire steps, yeah. Is with a typical like um, hand gesture of Sister Claire like, holding her. She's like kind of like holding up her like jaw with her yeah. with her hand and sitting next to another girl. And I'm like behind her like all the way at the top. Um, okay, so this was a walking pilgrimage that we did to um, Nuestra Señora de la Leche, Our Lady of la Leche. Right? Oh, um, and her feast is this weekend, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is actually. Yeah, yeah they're going to have the coronation. coronation. Yeah. They're going to uh, crown her, which is amazing. Um, and so this was a walking point where we did in Lent to that, um, like, shrine hermitage. I don't know what, we, what the correct name for it is, but basically Our Lady's little um, chapel there. And it was kind of like a way of, like, penance and stuff. And also another thing that just helped me so much with the sisters, it was like, a young person, you know, you should do penance. Let's do a walking pilgrimage. I had never thought about that in my life. It was like, oh, wow. We prayed the rosary. We had great conversations. Um, and then obviously our like goal was to reach Our Lady and, you know, to see her whatever. I can say that my memory with Sister Claire in this moment, like at least two things that I remember. One was I was talking to her while we were walking at one moment because, you know, we're walking on like the side of the road. So it's like you can only go like two people at a time. And at one moment, I was talking with Sister Claire, and I was that we were talking about some things. And um, I think I asked her like about her own family. Like, isn't it hard to? Because I I was already like I knew God was calling me, right? You know, and obviously um, there was this fight. Yeah, there's like there's fights kind of, inside. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not yeah. it's not you know um, something like that just comes naturally, right? Like obviously the Lord gives you the grace. And so I asked her, I was like, wasn't it hard for you to leave your family? And she said to me. Um, like, of, of, like, of course it was hard, but she said, but I know that if I'm taking care of God's things, he'll take care of mine. Like, and I, yeah, she just told me with like such a conviction that I just knew I was like, wow, like she really is living that, you know, hmm. like living that out. Yeah. Because you yeah. don't just spontaneously respond that way. Yeah. If it's not something you're no. Living. And yeah. she had shared with me a little bit, like the situation of her family, you know, that maybe her family in that moment, at least, wasn't so close to the faith. I wasn't so practicing, whatever. And so that just, um, yeah, like, struck you. Yeah, yeah, it like really helped me. I was like, wow, yeah. you know, it's true. It's like God's taking care of you. He'll take care of your family as well. Like obviously, wow, yeah, that's good. That's a good thing to keep in mind, even if you don't have a religious vocation or vocation of priesthood. Like this trust and in, in God's providence is always so important, right? In any vocation, know that to know that if we are faithful to God, He is faithful to us, and He will be able to take care of us. Okay, next photo. We're getting the next photo ready. Okay. Oh, uh, in the meantime, Marvin asks if you remember if Sister Claire um, listened to any Christian artists. Marvin, I was seeing that there. Yeah, um, I can actually tell you. This is funny because now the picture that you guys are seeing is when we went to Ireland in 2010. And we listened to music while, while we were on the bus a lot. We had made like a like a CD of, of good Christian music. Because Sister Claire, that was another thing. You know, Sister Claire really liked music. She was very yeah. like musical. Obviously, yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen it, you can, you're in YouTube. You can go to YouTube and see it now. Like Sister Claire, there's tons of videos of her singing, playing the guitar. Because music was a big thing. And she said for young people, she's like, I think it's really important that young people find like good Christian music, good music that can really like help them because, you know, young people like, you really like to, to listen to music yeah. and music is so influencing. Like it really influences yeah. a lot more than I guess the, like, than we imagine. Yeah. And so that was definitely something that she um, like 
Um, she kept in mind. Yeah, she kept in mind. Yeah. <laughs> she kept in mind this. Um, so, so yeah, one Catholic singer that the girls we really loved, and Sister Claire did too. Like, but she, you know, she was a sister, so obviously sisters, like, in a sense, um, we wouldn't be listening to music as much as like young girls would, right? Like, it was you know, sisters. We don't go around, but like, in, in well, now I guess everybody on their phone, right, has music. But like, in right. in those days, yeah. <laughs> talking about eleven years ago, those days, everybody with their MP3, right, your iPod, uh, all that kind of stuff. So. Um, we really, we really liked Danielle Rose. She's an American Catholic singer. I don't know if she still produces music or not, but definitely like helped us a lot. Like, and I remember we would like be like singing, kind of like dancing with Sister Claire, singing those songs because she had songs that, you know, obviously the words came from prayer. You could definitely like perceive that. And the music is like was really like nice as well. Like 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 it was like, like isn't there music. one that's like let it be done unto me? Yeah. So it's yeah. the words of our lady, you know, uh -huh. saying yes to God. So that's that's a great song to <laughs> sing, right? Yeah, we love singing that song, for example. Like it's sister, you know, maybe I don't know, it's it's true that now like I realize that we were talking about this before, Sister Anna and I. I was like, you know, but I feel like bad. I'm like, how are you guys gonna interview me about Sister Claire? Like I I mean I knew Sister Claire, obviously, like I'm telling stories, you know, about things that I knew, but it's like, wow, like after she died and I just realized it's like, Sister Claire, like, you know, I knew like this part of Sister Claire, like, yeah. you know, I, uh, you know, definitely she helped me in those, in, in this moment, like this really important moment in my life, but, um, but it was like, well, when yeah. she died, we realized yeah, like, like who we yeah, had been and, with. No, and <laughs> obviously it's very different, like being like a young girl by her side or being a sister in a community with her. And so Sister Claire, actually, she went to Ecuador when I and had it in Jesus and Novitiate. So sisters together, like like sisters, like half sisters, servant sisters together, very little. Like yeah. it was very little. Um, Yeah, so Danielle Rose, we definitely listened to her. There was more singers. But the only one that I can remember that helped me a lot, and I know maybe. Matt, 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 yeah, uh, no, um, yeah, definitely. I just remember sometimes when she, we um, we were together in the but, summertime, she would sing, yeah, like yeah. some of the songs that so, maybe some songs, of his songs. Yeah. But I remember with yeah, her, like, yeah, what yeah. I can like definitely say is Daniel Rose. Like we loved like listening to Daniel Rose. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely the song about Abraham's sacrifice. It was like we really liked that one because of the words and stuff. And yeah, it's just like really profound um, songs there. Yeah, I bet that really helped you guys to have like a filter it did. too. It when, did. No, and when sister, you're listening to music, Sister and, Claire, yeah. she would be like, "Pass me the songs too," and she would listen to it sometimes. And if she didn't like it, or if it had stuff that was like, even though it was like supposedly Catholic or Christian, she would be like, "No, like that's mm -hmm. not." Yeah. Like don't. This is not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it. Like she'd be like, <laughs> "Throw it away." Right. Like don't. You know. Yeah. Because it's so yeah. important. Yeah. To keep okay. in mind. I think we have one, one last picture. Photo. Yeah. This picture. This picture, if I'm not wrong, I think we are in um, Valencia. Right. We're in Valencia. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> this is just showing me. We're in Valencia. I'm already a candidate. And we were singing some kind of song. Like, I, this is the same. I have not seen this picture in my entire life, actually. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Oh, Sister Claire, she definitely, like, one thing I loved about her, and that definitely attracted me as a young person to her, was that she definitely, like, knew how to, like, be on our level. Like, not in a sense that, like, because Sister Claire did not accept superficiality, like, at all. Like, more than one time, she corrected me, like, in that sense. She was just, like, you're, and, like, after no, getting to know me a little bit, too, she was like, you are being superficial. Like, don't be that way you know um or yeah just like in so many things but like she also was like so like young herself you know like so like full of life like in that sense you know she knew how to be all like on her level and she would definitely like encourage us to be like yeah yeah like do a song do yeah. like a let's do a play and she would like do it with us yeah you know and that i just like i love that about her like i was like oh, man, sister claire like you know we were all just like sister claire's like the best you know she yeah she was always like willing to do stuff with us yeah Wow. That's what I can say about this picture. <laughs> we, I'm seeing a, um, a couple of questions here from Wendelie Gonzalez. 
maybe oh, if you yeah. want to answer. Okay. So when Lee says it's almost what inspired you to follow Jesus, a religious vocation, a religious vocation was Sister Claire influencing your call? Yeah, how did she influence you? Um, in yeah. I don't think, you know, honestly, like in my case, um, like the sisters, it's kind of was like my call and like the sisters, like for like on two different like Had sides. you already felt the call before you met the sisters? No, 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 no. no, no. Okay. When I was 16 years old, like not at all. And obviously like after Sister Claire spoke to us that way, yeah, didn't cross my mind <laughs> like at all. <clears throat> Um, yeah, no, the religious vocation, that's like, it's another story, right? Like another <laughs> changing tracks, um, story here. Um, but I would say definitely like, um, influence in the positive sense of seeing like a servant sister that gives herself and not just her, like the other sisters, like I can tell like the other sisters too, like the community in that sense. Um, but yeah, definitely. I mean, and yeah, I don't know if that kind of answers the question, <laughs> kind of like, Speaking like in like Indian sentences here, um, yeah, maybe without your being aware of it, she had yeah, a like influence. in that sense. I would say yeah. like in that sense, you know, like yeah. in that sense, like Sister Clay definitely like influenced me in that sense, you know, yeah. and yeah, it was kind of like I just felt like like she was like a friend mm -hmm. in that sense, so like I could trust her, you know, like mm -hmm. and that was uh, like a great thing. Like she was, I think like a lot of the girls at that time too felt like you know we could trust Sister Clay. Like you could go and be like, Sister Claire, like this is bothering. This is like, like I need help, or or just kind of like open up to her, and that she wasn't gonna like the other sisters too. Obviously, you know, like they weren't gonna go around like saying it to everybody, and also they were like able to help. Yeah, actually, Sister Claire, she, um, because when we came back from Ireland is when I asked to enter as a servant sister, and Sister Claire translated for me. I was like. I, cause I went up to her the, it, cause I, I felt like I could just, so I was like, sister Claire, we were in the airport. I was like, sister Claire, I was like, I need your help. And she was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah. But I was like really nervous. And she was like, what's, yeah, I'll help you. I'll help you. And she's like, yeah, man. She was like, yeah, man, like I'll help you. You know, she was like, <laughs> like that. And I was like, I was like, I'm going to, sister Claire, I was like, I'm going to Claire, when we go to Spain, like I need to, I need to talk like to mother, like to the mother superior, to, to father Raphael, our founder. I was like, I need to talk to her. And she just looked at me and she was like, she like whispered, she's like, do you think you have a vocation? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and so she was like, she was like, yeah, I got it. She's like, okay, okay, okay. Calm down. Like everything's fine. Yeah, when we get there, I'll take care of it. So that's a kind of like a, just like a silly Blair. story. Yeah, yeah I suspect yeah. Sister Claire helped me definitely. In that she's thing. always resolving whatever, yeah, resolving wh whoever problems. needed help with whatever yeah. they needed help with. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to say that we're uh, reaching the end of our <laughs> half hour. We could be here for another hour, I'm sure. Yeah, but, um, it went by fast. Yeah, it's gone by really fast. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thanks be to God. I think Sister Susan has um, taped a changing tracks, uh, right? Yeah. Okay, because yeah, they're changing no, tracks. Yeah, if you go yeah. to on YouTube and you put changing yeah, yeah, tracks, yeah, yeah. Sister Susan. Um, so maybe there will be more of her story there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's just like any last um, reflection you want to give or like no anything um, that you like or if you ask Sister Claire for help and and or you feel like she helps you now or any yeah. um, last you know um, yeah definitely I definitely or, feel like Sister Claire helps me now like that's for sure um yeah like for sure after her death that's been like amazing it's like like getting to know her now mm -hmm. i guess you could say yeah and just like feeling that um i guess like heaven is we a lot of sisters have said that heaven is like closer to us now yeah which is amazing um and yeah i, I don't know <laughs> know what to say like to finish um yeah like no sister claire has definitely helped me a lot i talked to her so i'm talking to her a lot and obviously somebody who has lived the same life that I'm living, like as a servant sister, mm -hmm. to be able to say, help, like Sister Claire, you live like these same th these same things, you've gone through like the, a lot of the same obstacles, like help, you know, help me through that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. And um, just to finish off, um, we wanted to remind everyone that um, the book, Alone with Christ Alone, written by Sister Christine Gardner, 
is available. Um, if you go on our website, www.sisterclaire.com, all the information is there. And as well as the documentary, All or Nothing, which I'm assuming you've probably all already seen, all of you. <laughs> but um, so you can you can find all that on sisterclaire.com. I see some some of you are saying, me gustaría que lo hicieras en español. So yeah, don't worry. Next week, save the date. Next Friday at 6.30, um, October 15th. Friday, October 15th, 6.30. We'll be back with Sister Susan speaking in Spanish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so... Um, yeah, all those who, all, all those, all those of you who speak Spanish or you know Spanish speakers, mm -hmm. get the word out, and we'll be waiting for you six thirty next Friday. Yeah. Okay. And I, I'm seeing here last, this question by yeah. Joel Davy. Yeah. Um, Joel, in Sister Claire's book, in yeah, the Sister Claire Alone with Christ Alone, in her book. Yeah, you can definitely see like her spiritual desolation, which is really amazing because yeah. all the time that I'm talking about here, when I met her in Jacksonville. It was a really hard time for her, like it's spiritually. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that there, which she even has more merit because it was like she was going through a hard time spiritually, but she was always like joking around, always really joyful with us, always like giving up herself. So just like an insert there at the end, sorry. <clears throat> so you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, well, we just wanted to finish off with a quote from Sister Claire herself. Yes. So she can speak to us all <laughs> so um well do you want to read it sisters okay yeah. <laughs> you can <laughs> whatever you want <laughs> okay um well okay. it starts off here and then mm -hmm. I, yeah should i go like, cut down a little bit yeah you okay to cut down, yeah so sister clear is talking here right okay and she says one day i took a book about mother Teresa of calcutta and i began to read a chapter on humility father Every time, because she's, sorry, this is from an um, email she wrote to Father Raphael, our um, founder. She said, Father, every time I get, I have to give a talk, a meditation, or a meeting, I ask the Lord a lot beforehand that he act and speak through me. That it not be Claire who speaks, but him through me. I ask that my sense of humor when explaining things not bring souls to me, but to him alone. I humble myself before him and the virgin before speaking. And I tell him that this act of obedience is for his glory. So I wanted to reflect upon humility because without this virtue, I do not do souls any good. But on the contrary, I harm them. I read from Mother Teresa these ways to become humble. Speak as little as possible about yourself. Keep busy with your own affairs and not those of others. Avoid curiosity. Do not interfere in the affairs of others. Accept small irritations with good humor. Do not dwell on the faults of others. Accept censures even if unmerited. Give in to the will of others. Accept insults and injuries. Accept, accept contempt being forgotten and disregarded. Be courteous and delicate even when provoked by someone. Do not seek to be admired and loved. Do not protect yourself behind your own dignity. Give in, give in in arguments, even when you are right. Choose always the more difficult task. So we have two, Sister Claire and um, St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta there. Right, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to ask all heaven to, to help us in living out humility. And um, yes, we're putting the, the names of the all or, all or Nothing, the documentary, there in the chat. So you can um, click there. And... Then yeah, you're seeing you're seeing how it's um, scheduled for October fifteenth. Um, we'll see Sister Susan back here speaking in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe new things will come out because it's really so yeah. sp sp uh, sp spontaneous. How do you say that? Um, so if you want to tune in, if you know Spanish, maybe more things will come out. And um, oh yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, our YouTube channel, because that way um, every time there's a new interview, like in, no in November and December and all that, um, the dates and the times will come out um, and they go right directly to our subscribers. And so don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And thanks for joining us. And we'll say a final Hail Mary yeah. to finish off. And we'll place all your intentions in Jesus' sacred heart and in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You know, Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh -huh.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I trust in you. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, our Queen and our Mother, bless our home. In the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you all and all your Bye. families. <laughs>